Janome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Janome Live. My name is Alba, and I am one of the Janome educators. Today, we're going to be talking about decorative stitches. I'm going to spend a little bit of time with you on how I use decorative stitches, what you can do with them creatively, and how to get your decorative stitches to look the best. So we'll discuss thread, stabilizers, and everything in between. I will be working today on the Janome Memory Craft 14,000, but don't worry if you don't have that machine. Everything I'm doing today can be done on any Janome machine with decorative stitches. I said that today I would be talking about decorative stitches and what I do with them. I wanted to show you just a small selection of the different types of decorative stitching and what you could do to get creative with the stitches. But before we actually start sewing, I wanted to go over thread, needle, and stabilizers. I prefer to use a 40 weight polyester embroidery thread when I do decorative stitches. It has a silkiness and a smooth flow that just gives the stitching a beautiful dimension and shine. When you do use a cotton thread, it, it shows very flat and very one-dimensional. So this is why I prefer to use an embroidery thread when doing decorative stitches. I will also wind a bobbin with the same thread that is in my needle in my bobbin. And the reason that I do this is decorative stitches not only go forwards and backwards, but go side to side as well. They do like a sewing machine dance. And this will pull thread and you may show a little bit of bobbin thread. By winding that bobbin in the same thread that's in your needle, it avoids this situation and just gives you a much prettier look. Decorative stitches need to be stabilized. This is something I've seen a lot of questions on. What I will be sewing on today is a white cotton fabric with an iron-on tearaway stabilizer. However, if I am doing a decorative stitch as a hem, I may be doing any one of these with a ribbon, without a ribbon. I may be stacking stitches. If it's going to be on a garment, on a towel, something that will be laundered often and most likely go in the dryer, I will then use a cutaway stabilizer. Stabilizer makes your thread behave well in the same way that interfacing when you're sewing a garment makes your fabric behave well. So that cutaway stabilizer needs to be there and present, especially when you're washing something often and it's going in the dryer. That fabric is gonna move, it's gonna shrink, it's gonna shift in a different way than the thread will. And your stitching sort of gets lumpy and bumpy and even ironing it out never makes it stay flat and that's because of no stabilizer behind it. With the tear away, after a few washes, it disintegrates and goes away. So now I'm going to go to my machine and show you how I do some of these. And the first thing that I am going to show you is stitch stacking. And I am going to select and I happen to really look through my decorative stitches on the machine. And I know that in the decorative stitch category, and this particular stitch that I like to use is on many of our machines. But what I like to use for the center is something that has a definite side to it, where it has almost walls. And I am going to, it is on the screen, but I'm going to stitch this out. And this is probably my favorite combination. 
I am using the F2 foot, which is completely open. And the Memory Craft 14,000 stitches nine millimeters wide. So that opening in the foot is that full nine millimeter width of the stitch. And I am going to sew a little bit and I wanna to come to a complete end of that pattern. So I touched my locking stitch. And I'm touching that scissor button to cut that thread. So now you will see that one pattern. This looks like a four leaf flower with a right and a left wall to it. And the reason I like when a decorative stitch has that straight edge to the right and to the left is stacking the next stitch makes it very, very easy. So now I am just gonna get really close over here and what I am doing is that open part of the foot I am using as part of my guide. My previously sewn stitch, I wanna just barely see in that opening. And I am going to select a stitch that it's also very common on most of our machines and it looks like inverted C's. And as I start stitching, you will see that. Now this is a trick that I like to use and that I use my scissor button to cut that tail of thread and I then lower my foot so that I don't have to be trimming all those tails at the end. So now as I'm sewing, I am keeping just barely that edge of that previously sewn decorative stitch right at the edge of my foot. And what this will do is these stitches will look as if they were continuous or kissing. And I'm coming to the end and I'm going to cut that thread. My foot lifts. Now look at that. That makes it appear as if the machine can do so much wider of a stitch. And this particular stitch here, as I said, is in most of our machines. And I really like it because it gives a lacy edge. And this, now I'm going to go to the opposite side. This particular stitch looks the same on the right or the left. So I do not need to flip my stitch to get it proportional and even on both sides. And I'm gonna do that on the opposite side. Again, I wanna see the edge of that previously sewn stitch right in the opening of my foot. And this is probably one of my favorite combinations and I love to do this around collars and around hems because it gives the appearance of lace. Look at how pretty that is. Now, I really want you to experiment and try different decorative stitches. Previously, I did this one here. Now, with this particular stitch, it is straight on one side and scalloped or curved on another. So this one, I did have to change the orientation of the stitch and flip it on the machine. So just be careful and be mindful of those type of stitches. But again, anything in the center, what I find the easiest is anything with a straight edge making it easier to stack or to make those side stitches kiss and just make that look as if it were one continuous stitch. And I love that for a lacy effect. I love that down uh, the edge of an opening of a jacket for hemming, um, on curtains, Really, the limit is uh, endless and up to your imagination. Now, I would love it if you would send some pictures of some really creative uh, stick stitch stacking ideas that you find and combinations that you like. 
Now, the next area that I'm going to go into is the heirloom stitches. And the heirloom stitches, there's some really nice varieties in here that lend itself to doing stitching on top of ribbons. Now again, I'm doing a nine millimeter stitch and this ribbon, the pink, happens to be half an inch. So it pretty much covers the width of that stitching, which is very nice. So when I do this, I like to place my ribbon onto my fabric and I make sure that my ribbon is underneath my foot. And if you notice, the width of that ribbon is pretty much even with the opening of that foot. So this is why I like to use that F2 foot, that custom crafted open foot. Now I have left my stitches on nine millimeter wide, but if you do have a machine that is seven millimeter wide, you may wanna to go to that quarter inch ribbon. And I do like to play and test. And now what I'm going to do is just hold that ribbon down and I am going to let the machine do the work. And I am just keeping my ribbon nice and even in that opening. This adds color and it also adds stability to that stitch. Perfect. And you can do this with a wide variety of stitches. Don't be afraid to play. This one is one that I used on that stitch stacking. And I like it because it has a curved edge and a straight edge, making it really pretty for hems. And you'll notice I did not iron glue. I left that ribbon loose. I find that leaving it loose with the movement of the machine just helps it lay flatter. Sometimes if I try to secure down my ribbon too much, I wind up with more of a shifting and an issue and a problem. Now organza ribbon is also very commonly used. And uh, for this, this one happens to be five eighths. So I knew that it would be a little bit wider than my decorative stitch. And on my sample here, it gives me a little bit of a flap or just a little bit of an edge outside of those decorative stitches. Now, as I played with different decorative stitches, when they got really dense, it really caused that ribbon to curl and pucker. So you definitely want to do a test when you're doing this type of stitching. And I'm picking another one of the heirloom stitches, just something I thought would be pretty. I'm contrasting my thread to make this easier for you to see what I am stitching, but you could choose complementing, contrasting, really depending on the look that you're going for. Now the organza, what I like is the sheerness of it. So it gives me a change in color, and um, but I still see my original garment or project that I'm working with, that original fabric. Again, touching that locking stitch will lock and complete the pattern so that I do not have a half-sewn flower, heart, or whatever my stitch may be. Now, one of the things that I love to do is add trim to items, but sometimes my trim, I can't find just the right color or just the right look I'm going for. So this over here looks like trim that I've sewn down on my fabric, but all this is is decorative stitches, and this is done with floss. So this is Robeson Anton Serger Floss 
but I've also used pearl crown rayon and some of the fine crochet threads. And with this thicker thread, I did wind it in my machine. But when I put this into my machine, I am going to just put this in and not go in any tension disc at all. Again, I like to match my floss and my needle thread to the same exact color or very close to it. So I am going to pick a stitch. And when you're doing reverse bobbin work, it's hard to tell because this is all white. But here is my fabric up top and here is my stabilizer. So I want to work upside down. And when I put my fabric down that I'm about to start stitching, the first thing I want to do is pull up that floss. I don't want that tail or that bunching to be on the right side of my fabric because this is what will be shown. So I am doing this, I always start my test with no tension in my bobbin case and just standard tension on the machine. 90% of the time, this is all I do. And I am going to slow down my machine to a medium speed and I am going to sew. And when I come to a stop and my needle happened to have landed in the center where the beginning of my stitch was, if it had not, I could do needle up down to get my positioning and my ending point exactly where I want that. I'm going to raise my needle, raise my foot, and I do not want to use my thread cutter with this thick, heavy thread. And all I will do with that is I will pull on that thread and pull that floss to the back side so that when you look at the front, look at how neat, look at how perfectly finished that looks. And all this is was using my decorative stitches. So again, I really invite you to send some pictures, get creative, show me with what you come up with using your decorative stitches. I hope that uh, you will inspire me as much as I've inspired you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that everyone learned something today about decorative stitches and the Janome products. Make sure to come back soon to watch another Janome Live. Thank you. Bye-bye.